Welcome back, guys, on this uh, Thursday morning. Um, something that's been in the news lately, and it seems like everywhere you turn, you see something about this story. It's about Kanye West. And earlier, mm. Kanye posted and then he deleted some confusing and controversial tweets saying that he'd been trying to divorce Kim and that she was trying to, quote, lock him up. I know you were seeing some of that stuff, Maria. Yeah. And then, he, as you said, he deleted it. And yesterday she released uh, what many are calling, and I actually thought was a very powerful statement about her husband's recent behavior and about his mental health. Here's a little bit of what she said. And this is a quote. As many of you know, Kanye has bipolar disorder. Anyone who has this or has a loved one in their life who does knows how incredibly complicated and painful it is to understand. She went on to call Kanye a brilliant but complicated person, writing, those who are close with Kanye know, know that his heart and understand that his words sometimes do not align with his intention, adding Kanye's disorder and creativity are part of his genius, and as many have witnessed, many of his big dreams do come true. And then she ended the statement by asking for compassion and empathy mm -hmm. from the public and the media. And I, that, I think, is what we should be giving everybody, yes. uh, not just them because they're Kanye West or Kim Kardashian West. But I think so many people are struggling with mental health issues, yeah. mental health stigma. And particularly at this time, there's obviously, you know, uh, big ends of the spectrum of mental health, but we should all be offering, I think, compassion and empathy. Yeah, I totally agree. And what she said, I thought what Kim said was so insightful. And this is yeah. on a totally different scale, but I remember Carson coming into the studio and he was talking about his anxiety, his disorder. Yeah. And he said, what is crippling sometimes is also the exact reason that when I see a sunrise or hear some incredible piece of music, I actually watch the hairs on my arm stand up and I feel yeah. it on the back of my neck. Like I feel it at both ends. So what is crippling in one, in one sense is actually the mm -hmm. very thing that's making me alive in another sense, which is kind of, uh, I think what Kim was saying and, you know, makes him creative. That is, that's his superpower, yeah. right? And I think people, whether it's the film A Beautiful Mind mm -hmm. or whether it's people talking about their ADD, their anxiety, uh, that the, as you just said, it makes them incredibly artistic and or sensitive. Mm -hmm. And then I think, as she's saying, there's complications when you have, you know, bipolar and somebody's over 18, families really mm -hmm. struggle uh, in this space about you know, she talked about being powerless. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people think, well, why doesn't a family member just step in right. if someone is struggling with mental health issues? And it's really way more complicated, right, yeah. than any of us realize. Let's bring in Dr. Uh, Becky Kennedy. She's going to help explain this. And I think, Dr. Becky, Maria raises a good question. Like, sometimes families aren't sure what their role is, what they can or should do in, in, in a situation that's tricky like that one. So, uh, you know, I think there's a couple things that are helpful. Number one, just to educate yourself, right? Because knowledge really is power to learn what a certain disorder is about, what it might look like, what the symptoms look like. Then second, I think after you've learned to really think my job is to kind of validate and listen to the person's internal experience, but not to fix. And mm. I think we know that also none of us like to be fixed, even when we complain about day to day stuff. And it's the same thing. So listening to someone could sound like, wow, it sounds like this is going on for you. Or let me see if I got this right. Right. Which is different than, hey, how about you do this, this or this? Or mm -hmm. how about I come up with a game plan to fix? And then I think the third thing that's really important when you're living with someone who has a serious mental illness is to remember, yes, I can validate and support them. But I'm a person, too, and I need to pay attention to my own needs, right? And it's not one or the other, that I have my own boundaries. And that actually helps a person with a serious mental illness feel safe because they feel like my stuff isn't contagious mm. to everyone. That person feels sturdy in my life. Dr. Becky, can you explain for people really quickly kind of what bipolar disorder is? Because they don't understand how yeah. someone like Kanye West could be putting these tweets out one second, then deleting them, then being so erratic. And they really also don't understand what happens in the mental health space when someone turns 18. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So bipolar disorder used to be called manic depressive illness. And the thing about that former title that was kind of 
nice is that it kind of gives you an insight into what happens and that bipolar disorder causes unusual shifts in mood, energy, activity level, concentration, and an ability to carry out day-to-day -day tasks. And there's a manic stage, which is a very up energized, intense mood state. And then there's a depressive stage, which is very down and hopeless. And one of the thing about the manic stage is we tend, we all act how we feel. And so in a manic stage, someone's actions and verbalizations are going to reflect the intensity and extremeness of how they feel in their body. And so what I think is true about what people say in those states is the reality of how they feel, mm -hmm. not necessarily the exact words and the content itself. And Maria, your point is a good one. When someone's an adult, it's very different. We can't force adults to do things. And the guidelines for mandated hospitalizations are, are very strict. That can't, mm -hmm. you really have to meet them. Hospitals don't just say, okay, sure, that person could use some help. It's, it's, and it does put families in a really tricky position. We just have yeah. a couple of seconds left, but I think there are, there are a lot of people who are dealing with a lot of issues who aren't able to get help just because of the time that we are in. Any suggestions on ways that they can get help? Uh, the people who are in yeah. kind of who are struggling? Yeah. I mean, look, I think that that's, that, that is really complicated. And one of the things is you have to find that voice inside you that says there's a better way. Right. There's a way to kind of get through this, to try to find that hope Mm -hmm. that there can be a way to kind of function kind of, mm -hmm. you know, in a way that's healthier for you and to in your important relationships. Yeah. All right, Dr. Becky, thank you so much for uh, sharing with us this morning. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having yeah. me. And bottom line is not to judge. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's really it.